We will revert now to the order of business. Introduction and swearing in of new members. Laying of documents by ministers. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Cat Island, Romkey, and San Salvador. Um, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I beg leave to uh, lay on the table of the house a copy of the value added tax school supplies tax holiday order 2022. All of the documents be brought up. Deputy Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the value added tax withholding agents rules. 2022. Order that the documents to lie on the table. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents to lie on the table. Further tabling of documents. Yes. Deputy Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the carbon credit trading. Act appointed a notice 2022. Order that the documents be brought up. Yes. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I beg leave. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Order that the documents to lie on the table. Uh, For the laying of documents. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House, a copy of the Public Debt Management Bahamas Register Stock, number 5, 2025, 2027, 2029, 2032, 2042, and 2052 directions, 2022. What are the documents be brought up? Order that the documents to lie on the table. Uh, Further laying of documents. Mr. Dep Deputy Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House Public Debt Management, Bahamas Register Stock Number 5, 2025, 2027, 2029, 2042, and 2052 directions, 2022. Order that the documents be brought up. I said number five, but it should be number six because number five was late. That's number five. Right? What is the correction? Number six. I said number five, but it should be number six. Thank you. One of the documents. Mm -hmm. One of the documents to lie on the table. Uh, may I just see the.
Thank you. Order that the documents to lie on the table. For the laying of documents, the chair recognizes the honorable member for Fort Charlotte. Good morning, uh, Mr. Deputy. I beg leave on behalf of the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Tourism, Investment, and Aviation to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. The Grand Bahama Port Area Investment Incentives Extension of Time Applications Order 2022. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents to lie on the table. Further laying of documents. The chair recognizes the honorable member for West Grand Bahama and Dimini. Mr. Deputy, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. The Public Holidays Queen Elizabeth II Commemorative Day Order 2022. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents to lie on the table. For the laying of documents. Mr. Deputy, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the Price Control General Amendment Number 10 Regulations 2022. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents to lie on the table. For the laying of documents. Mr. Deputy, I beg leave to lay on the table the Price Control General Amendment Number 11, Regulations 2022. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents to lie on the table. For the laying of documents. Mr. Deputy, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the Price Control General Amendment Number 12, Regulations 2022. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents to lie on the table. For the laying of documents. Mr. Deputy, I beg leave to lay on the table the price control general amendment number 13, regulations 2022. Order the documents to lie on the table. For the laying of documents. Mr. Deputy, I beg leave to lay on the table the Public Holidays Emancipation Day 2022, opening of shops notice 2022. Order that the documents be brought up. Okay. Order that the documents to lie on the table. For the laying of documents. Mr. Deputy, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the Public Holidays Queen Elizabeth II Commemorative Day Opening of Shops Notice 2022. Order that the documents be brought up. Thank you. Order that the documents to lie on the table. For the laying of documents, the Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Pinewood. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. On behalf of the Minister of Health and Wellness, I beg to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. The Health Services COVID-19 Prevention and Management of Community Spread Amendment Number 12, Rules 2022. Order that the documents be brought up.
order that the documents to lie on the table. For the laying of bills. Mr. Deputy, I beg, I beg leave to lay on the table of, of the House a copy of the following. The Health Services COVID-19 Prevention and Man Management of Community Spread Amendment Number 13, Rules 2022. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents to lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Mr. Deputy, I beg leave to lay on the House. Oops. Mr. Deputy, I beg leave to, la to lay on the table of the House the copy of the following. The Health Services COVID-19 General Amendment Number 5, Rules 2022. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents to lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Mr. Deputy, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. The Health Services COVID-19 General Amendment Number 6, Rules 2022. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents to line on the table. Further laying of documents. Mr. Deputy, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. The Health Services COVID-19 Prevention and Management of Community Spread Amendment Number 14 Rules 2022. Order that the documents be brought up. Order the documents to lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Mr. Deputy, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. The National Health Insurance Authority Annual Report 2021. Order that the documents be brought up. Thank you, Mr. Depp. Order that the documents to lie on the table. <coughs> Further laying of documents. Okay. Statements and communications by ministers. The chair recognized the honorable member for Cat Island Romkey in San Salvador. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mr. Deputy Speaker, what a difference one year makes. Amen. I'm being chastised. <laughs> I should say, what a difference a year makes. A difference a new day makes. <laughs> <laughs> it was just 12 months ago that the Bahamian people voted overwhelmingly for change. They didn't like what was being done, how it was being done, and who was doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and by any measure, the country was in a dire state. The economy was headed for a fiscal cliff. Two billion had been borrowed every year 
for four years with no possible plan for the growing, for the growing debt. Hospitals remained under extreme pressure with patients treated in parking lots, severe shortages of doctors and nurses, and regular leaks and flooding in hospital buildings. Schools were still going back and forth between in-person and online learning, with thousands of students not attending classes at all. Bahamians were barred from leaving their houses in the evening. In thousands of homes, not a single adult was working with an economy that was on life support wow. after a series of lockdowns. Everything was stalled in Abaco and Grand Bahama. Hope was in very short supply. Civil liberties remained suspended since March 2020 and millions had been spent during the pandemic outside the normal procurement rules. So Deputy Speaker, this was the state of the nation in September 2021. A fiscal crisis, a health crisis, an education crisis, and an economic crisis. We got right to work so that a new day could dawn for the Bahamas. And the accomplishments of the past 12 months have only been possible because the Bahamian people stepped up and stepped forward and worked with us. We are grateful for their trust and confidence and the partnership we have forged bodes well for the positive national development of the Bahamas. Yes, we have accomplished a lot in this first year, but there is still so much to do. We are making good progress on many of the commitments which we made in our blueprint for change. But the war in Ukraine, which started back in February, and COVID-related manufacturing and supply chain issues in some of the major markets have combined to create a new and very serious emergency, a global inflation crisis, which has driven up prices across the world. For a long time now, the cost of living in the Bahamas has been too high. But with global inflationary pressures driving prices up across the board, life has become unaffordable for so many Bahamian families. Deputy Speaker, the government is working hard to help the country recover and to provide relief from these multiple crises. At the same time, we are also working to bring about the big transformative changes which will make us stronger, less vulnerable to future crises, and bring us closer to fulfilling our national potential. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I'd like to review some of the highlights of what has been accomplished during the past year. Having been so absorbed in the day-to-day, -day, it is instructive to step back and look at the big picture in health. Mr. Deputy Speaker, even before coming to office, we made the point that the economic crisis the country faced couldn't be fully tackled until the COVID-19 health crisis was being well managed. At the time, the Bahamas was performing very poorly on regional comparisons regarding the management of COVID. We knew our country could do much better. We knew that our country could do much better. We introduced free testing, something the previous government said couldn't be done. Distributed almost one million free medical grade masks, hired more doctors and nurses, and began to upgrade local clinics. Our commitment continues with new industrial agreements with the Bahamas Nurses Union, which includes salary increases and retention bonuses. This is simply the right thing to do 
for those who have done so much to save lives during the pandemic. Often, Mr. Speaker, Deputy Speaker, often at great personal risk to themselves in the public service. We also settled and are continuing to settle outstanding promotions and regularizations for public sector workers. We negotiated union agreements with the Bahamas Educators, Counselors and Allied Workers Union, the Bahamas Customs, Immigration and Allied Workers Union, the Bahamas Union of Teachers, the Bahamas Nurses Union, yes. the Bahamas Educators yes. Managers, Managers Union. We have completed those agreements. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is important to note, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that these negotiations resulted in the largest ever yes. remuneration for Bahamian workers yes. in public service. Yes. Don't take my word for it. Listen to what they said yes. when they signed right. their, right. uh, their contracts. And we approved the return of annual increments for public servants, along with an increase in public service pensions. Yeah. Yeah. As I indicated earlier, higher prices are squeezing Bahamian households. We are implementing multiple policies to address the issues which contribute to the high cost of living. The most direct tool we have to affect the cost is by reducing import duties and monitoring price controls. I repeat that. The most direct tool we have to affect the cost is by reducing import duties and monitoring price controls. In the past year, we have therefore reduced import duties on dozens of food items, including healthy options like fruits and vegetables. We have lifted the import ban on Canadian beef, which will lower the cost of meat to consumers. We have expanded the list of food items on the price control list and have also hired new price control inspectors to ensure compliance with price regulation requirements. These are measures which bring some immediate relief, but we know we also must take big steps to reduce reliance on, expect, on, in, on expensive foreign imports. We have committed in agriculture, we have committed millions of dollars in new investments for food security initiatives, which means we'll grow a lot more of what we eat right here at home and create opportunities in Bahamian ownership and employment. We have also introduced duty-free concessions for parts to repair fishing and farming equipment. We are facilitating direct cash subsidies and concessions for poultry farming to reduce the reliance on foreign imports. For the same reason, two new slaughterhouses have been commissioned for New Providence and Illustra. And the reopening of packing houses after four years will assist farmers with feed, fertilizers, and other tools. I'll speak in a few moments, too, to the many new opportunities being created in agriculture. Affordable homes. Mr. Deputy Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, we have picked up, we have picked up the ideological battle begun under the Pindling Hanna era and once again want to support Bahamians in owning their homes. In this first year, Yes. We made available 47 new affordable homes in New Providence. Yes. Yes. 
in Pinecrest, first phase of development. New, ho new de housing developments in New Providence and Abaco are also underway, yes. along with a new housing initiative at Ocean Hole in Rock Sound, Eleuthera. We have expanded the concessions to first-time homeowners, which includes the purchasing of land, building, and purchasing a house and renovating existing structures. We increased the level of exemption for what? On homes from 250,000 to 300,000. And we also implemented broad-based reduction of duties on building materials. Mr. Deputy Speaker, as we all know, energy is a significant part of the monthly expenditure for households and businesses. We have launched a program to implement solar, solar microgrids, rooftop panels, and other solar devices, which are to be deployed across multiple family islands. This will benefit up to 17,000 Bahamians. Alongside this, we have reduced customs duties for solar products. We have also reduced to 10% the duty on electric cars, which cost under $70,000. And we are well advanced in negotiations for a 61 megawatt solar facility here in New Providence to decrease the cost of electricity. <laughs> Bahamians deserve cleaner, more reliable, and more affordable energy, and we are working hard to build the solutions that will get us there. Mr. Deputy Speaker, Bahamians have really endured one tough year after another. The 2017 shock rises in VAT and other taxes, along with increased unemployment and reduction in support for the most vulnerable, then Dorian, then COVID, and now a global inflation crisis. A great many families are finding themselves struggling, including many who are doing fine before the series of emergencies. It has been a priority of my administration to offer both compassion and relief by both social support and empowerment. Our administration is providing substantial support to successful local feeding programs run by churches and NGOs. The funding for social assistance increased by 50% compared to pre-pandemic levels. We have extended tax breaks and concessions in Grand Bahama and Abaco recovery zones. We made a $500 lump sum payment just before Christmas to the unemployed to provide a little breathing room. My government provided relief grants to vendors in Port Lucaya, downtown Freeport Farmers Market, Eight Mile Rock Fish Fry, and Lucayan Harbor and New Bite Fish Fries. We also provided a financial stipend to Surrey drivers. Mm -hmm. Deputy Speaker, we successfully reopened schools after two years of on online learning. Yeah. And we launched a free Wi-Fi in the parks program. Yeah. Yeah. called Park Connect Bahamas. To date, 30 parks across the country have been outfitted with free internet access. We successfully relaunched Urban Renewal, including the Urban Renewal Ban and the Urban Renewal Foundation, which will spearhead a list of social support and empowerment programs. The Urban Renewal Small Home Repairs Program is well underway in Abaco, Moors Island, Bimini, Exuma, Cat Island, and New Providence. And the Disaster Reconstruction Authority launched a home assistant repair program 
in Grand Bahama and Abaco. Mr. Deputy Speaker, in furthering our commitment to promote better government, during the past year, my government made notable progress on a range of issues. We eliminated the travel health visa, which was, which was such a burden to so many Bahamians. We, we enacted legislation concerning the presumption of death in order to allow survivors to more quickly settle the affairs of loved ones who go missing after circumstances of peril, such as hurricanes. A family island help desk was set up in the Department of Local Government to assist local government personnel in navigating red tape and addressing relevant issues. The Revenue Enhancement Unit was re-established to collect over $1 billion in tax arrears. collection, more effective compliance measures, and enforcement of laws. New carbon credits legislation was passed, which will enable the Bahamas to be compensated for the role that our mangroves and seagrasses play in eliminating carbon from the atmosphere. Mr. Deputy Speaker, in our blueprint for change, we committed to making the Bahamas a more attractive investment proposition for Bahamians and international investors. We also launched Bahamas Invest to reimagine national investment policy and the national investment promotional strategy to create a fertile environment for domestic and international investment. The focus is improving the ease of doing business, implementing faster processes, focusing on strategically developed industries on each island and providing for better, more fine-tuned concessions. Advances made during the past year in tourism bode well for the robust growth and development of the industry. A successful RFP was issued for the Grand Bahama International Airport redevelopment. We were successful in negotiating the int introduction of a new direct flight service, new direct flight services to Grand Bahama from Orlando, Charlotte, Raleigh Doham, and the resumption of the Sunwing service from Canada. Negotiations for the closing on the sale of Grand Lucayan are on track to close in November. Carnival Cruise broke ground on a new cruise port in East, Gra East Grand Bahama, which results in at least 1,000 local jobs. My government commissioned and built a new airport terminal in Rygate Island, and the Great Harbor Key Airport Terminal was completed. A memorandum of understanding was signed with the United Arab Emirates to explore joint initiatives in tourism. Yes. We brought back festivals, regattas, and water sports. And we helped to secure the safe reopening of the straw market and Surrey carriage industry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Deputy Speaker, we applaud the significant increase in passenger arrivals mm -hmm. via cruise ships, which includes the historic arrival of 20,000 cruise passengers in a single day at the Nassau cruise port. Other welcome developments include the launch of the TSA pre-check at, at the Linden Pilling International Airport, which is the first such facility to be established outside of the United States. I repeat that the TSA pre-check is now established, has been launched at the Linden Pilling Airport, and it is the first facility, for such facility, to be outside of the United States. We also launched 
global tourism and investment missions to promote the reopening of the Bahamas and strengthen our ability to draw visitors from around the world. We now have missions in Latin America, Europe, the Middle East, the United States, and Canada. Our Spots in Paradise was also relaunched, and the refurbishment begun on sporting facilities to host events. You know, the, you know right, as we speak. Yes. yes. The Miami Heat is here now. You know, getting themselves ready for the season. Deputy Speaker, I mean, can speak with other things, but as Deputy Speaker, growing more, growing more of what we eat here in the Bahamas. It's not just about lowering food costs or food bills, as important as that is. It's also about creating opportunity. Yes. 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 I'm glad to be able to say things that the Bahamas is finally moving forward on this important front. BAMSI was further established as an education and research institute. $1.3 million in grants was approved for farmers and fishermen by the Small Business Development Center. The process to obtain fishing license was digitized. Most fishing licenses can now be obtained online, reducing the need for travel from the family islands. And community kitchens are being established in the family islands to help farmers prepare, process, and package their food products. This is just the beginning, Deputy Speaker. But, but, but what is not lost on me is that a lot has been done. Yes. But there's still a lot to do. Yes. As we grow and diversify our economy, it is critical that the Bahamian people have access to, to the training they need to take advantage of these expanded opportunities. During the past year, a partnership was formalized between the Bahamas Maritime Authority and the LJM Marine Academy to offer more training opportunities for Bahamians in the maritime sector. The Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute, through the Ministry of Education, and technical vocational training, launched a Smart Start program to support secondary school students impacted by the pandemic. Yeah. The Public Service Professional Engagement Program now provides paid training for entry-level servants, civil servants, with clearly defined career tracks and employment offers for successful trainees at the end of the program, and persons living with disabilities, now have better recruitment yes. and training opportunities in the public sector. Yes. Yeah. Very good. The digital economy, the digital economy is an area where we especially want Bahamians to be able to take advantage of the opportunities for jobs and wealth creation. And so in our first year, we passed new legislation concerning digital assets and expanded promotional efforts to attract leading fintech, crypto, and blockchain firms to the country. This led to the Bahamas being rated a number one jurisdiction for crypto regulation. Mr. Deputy Speaker, our government also partnered with the Central Bank of the Bahamas to increase the circulation and use of the sand dollar. It is expected that this will make small business transactions faster, less costly, and more secure. As the, Mr. Deputy Speaker, as the representative of three family islands, I'm always mindful that our efforts in national development do not leave them behind. In the past year, 
we have made a start on several initiatives to stimulate family island economies. In Grand Bahama, many Bahamians were hired in the Ministry of Grand Bahama's beautiful Grand Bahama and Grand Bahama Clean Cleanup Initiative to increase employment and revive neighborhoods. Empower Grand Bahama was launched to provide micro grants to assist entrepreneurs. The launch of the Family Island Development Trust Fund means that more of the taxes collected in the Family Islands will stay there to be used for infrastructure and other investments. And new incentives were implemented to bring emerging technologies to the Family Islands. Mr. Deputy Speaker, improving the ease of doing business and empowering Bahamians are continual ongoing, are continual ongoing multifaceted efforts, not single step exercises. We have allocated $50 million to support the development of small businesses through the Bahamas Development Bank, Bahamas Agriculture and Industrial Corporation, the Venture Capital Fund, and the Small Business Development Center. We have also strengthened the national trade policy and offered it for public consultation. It is anticipated that this will provide strategic direction on reducing the trade deficit, lowering imports, and creating opportunities for Bahamians in the international trade of goods and services. We have worked hard to implement policies and initiatives which positively and directly touch the lives of many Bahamian people. We've been able to reduce the turnaround time for licensing of new watercrafts to under 30 days. We have facilitated taxi drivers in receiving their own taxi plates. We have expunged the records of minor offenses to allow those Bahamians affected to become gainfully employed and productive citizens. We created a cultural artist registry to which more than 300 cultural and creative artists have already signed up. More than 60 small cultural grants were given for cultural projects and cultural exchanges. Seed funding for John Canoe and the Family Islands was, also, was, was almost tripled. A special joy, a special joy, Mr. Deputy Speaker, came from the Summer Cultural Arts Camp Program, Camp Program, in which more than 700 people participated. A new school for the creative and performing arts is in development, and work is underway to launch a national youth guard to support our community during times of emergency. Mr. Deputy Speaker, years of severe economic disruption have caused great harm to our country not least in terms of the impact on the safety of our streets and communities. We are implementing a broad range of policies to increase safety and security. We've expanded the reach of urban renewal. We have dramatically increased recruitment into the Defense Force, Police Force, and Department of Immigration. Six million dollars has been allocated for new Defense Force vessels to better protect our borders. A new coastal radar was commissioned at the Coral Harbor base. The Marco Alert System was launched to activate an urgent bulletin in child abduction cases and get information to the public sooner. Use of the spot shotter technology was expanded across New Providence and into Grand Bahama to tackle gun-related crimes. Mr. Deputy Speaker, we launched our second chance program to give young people productive pathways from crime. We also expanded the use of body cameras and dash cameras <coughs> by police officers to support them in providing greater accountability and more accurate monitoring of officer-citizen interactions. In Grand Bahama, we acquired a truck, a fire truck, and we are implementing new training opportunities for that service. Saturation patrols are a priority in areas where they are most needed, and they are in train. We understand that poor lighting impacts crime, and therefore, 
we have launched an extensive street lights project to ensure our communities are better. Mr. Deputy Speaker, in this first year, we have built a strong foundation for recovery and progress. We will continue to build on this foundation to provide relief, opportunities, and security for all Bahamians. Our legislative agenda will continue to follow the priorities set out in my government's speech from the throne last year. We will introduce measures to reform the provision of health care in the Bahamas, particularly in relation to mental health. This includes a $10 million new catastrophic care fund to help medical patients and a new wellness program from the Ministry of Health. We have launched new orthopedic clinic and wound care services at the Princess Margaret Hospital. We are especially excited. We are especially excited mm. at the prospect that a new hospital in Grand Bahama will soon bring ground. We will also reintroduce RISE, a social services assistance program to help alleviate poverty within those families and break the cycle of poverty who meet the certain health and education criteria and to support the dignity of our people. In addition, we will soon open a new women's shelter which will help women and children who need a safe harbor. The Abaco Center, a community center, a state-of-the-art hurricane shelter will be constructed. And a contributory pension plan will be introduced for the public service to take better care of future retirees. We intend to introduce fiscal reforms to improve the management of public finances, along with a number of amendments to deal with some practical issues arising from statutory requirements. Mr. Deputy Speaker, ever mindful of the increasing challenges surrounding issues connected with climate change and the environment, we intend to introduce new legislation and update existing legislation to improve the various ways in which our natural resources are protected, managed, and commercialized. As part of our determination to fight crime in the Bahamas, we will also advance legislation to strengthen our prevention efforts. Alongside this effort also sits our commitment to improve anti-corruption measures. We will provide more details in due course. We take seriously our commitment to rebuild trust with the Bahamian people by improving our system of governance. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I am grateful to have the opportunity to talk to people from all walks of life. It is impossible not to be struck by the tragedies involving so many of our boys and young men. The crime statistics portray a stark picture of violence, gang-related activity, and general criminality, which has become the fate of many hundreds. Low attainment levels by boys and young men at all stages of education is a serious cause for concern. In families and communities, I hear the stories and I see the pain caused by a range of social psychological and economic issues. In conversation with some of my fellow leaders in the region, they also have detected similar worrying signs in their countries. Mr. So Deputy Speaker, I raise this point here to say that this is a matter around which the government will explore a number of policy options, which may or may not require legislative action to implement. I also raised the point to invite honorable members to consider issues specific to boys and young men in their constituencies and to share their findings of note with the government that we might come to solutions which are best for the whole country. We are in danger of losing a generation and it is incumbent upon 
us all to ensure that that does not happen. Mr. Deputy Speaker, a word about governance. While our focus remains to build on the strong foundation we have laid for recovery and progress, it is equally important to be mindful not just of what we do, but how we do it. In this case, I'm not talking about strategy. Instead, I'm raising issues connected with governance, more specifically, how we in this parliament as we go about our work for the people. In this moment of reflection, I think it's important that we, we remind ourselves of the fundamentals of why we were sent here. Yes. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It is a great privilege that the people of Cat Island, Romkey and San Salvador have trusted me to represent them in this honorable house. And it is the utmost of honor of my life that I'm also able to serve as Prime Minister. When I received my instruments of office, I made a specific commitment to upholding integrity, accountability in this administration. And I now reaffirm that commitment to the whole House. On our side, these are the standards that have been and will continue to be enforced in our caucus. And I have every confidence that the leader of the opposition will do the same with his. I am pleased that we have toned down the shouting, the insults, <laughs> and the many personal attacks which were too often on display in the last parliament. You know, I could count on the one hand, things on one hand, the number of occasions when I was allowed to participate in debate without know, being shouted down with vile smears, with vile smears and insults. It did not serve the public well. In conclusion, Mr. Deputy Speaker, against, against so many criteria and in so many ways, the Bahamas is in a much better place than it was. Truly, what a difference a year makes. New day. I, I say much has been done, but I also say there's still much to do. We are grateful for the opportunity. We are grateful for the opportunity to serve the Bahamian people. And by the grace of God, Amen. let's break success yes, in all that we do. Thank you. Yes. All of the documents we brought up. All the communications will lie on the table. Further communications by ministers. The chair recognized the honorable member for Pinewood. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy. Mr. Deputy, before I get into my contribution, my communication on Fiona and Ian, I would just like to, to say that I was privileged on Saturday, 
to be president in the Great Hall of the General Assembly of the United Nations in New York. To witness the contribution by our Prime Minister, the Honorable Member for Cat Island Rock Kids and Salvador. Mr. Speaker, so I heard firsthand, and I think I'd like to assure this Honorable House that the video did not do justice to the ovation and applause given to our leader by the Assembly, not just the Bahamians, but everyone there present. It was very moving, and he touched a chord with the actual, all of those uh, representatives from the various countries. And I think the, the Prime Minister should be applauded as he continued to represent the country well. You know, Mr. Deputy, this was somebody during the campaign who the knock on was he can't speak. It is so amazing that the honorable member speak in the same way, using the same tone, and using the same words, seem to be getting different results. And what was considered by some, and I say that tongue in cheek, was his weakness has, has on this side, we already know. Always. Mr. Deputy, I, um, I stand here to provide a briefing on Hurricane Fiona and Ian. Hurricane Fiona was the sixth named storm, third named hurricane, and first major hurricane of the 2022 hurricane season, the Atlantic hurricane season. Following its, its impact to Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, the hurricane made its way through the Mona Passage towards Turkish and Caicos Islands, and then the Bahamas. On Saturday, the 17th of September, 2022, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force activated their pre-deployment protocol. NEMA procured 45 pallets of emergency supplies, such as water, food, tops, cleaning supplies from Super Value Stores, Aquapure, and NEMA's New Providence warehouses. The emergency supplies were loaded onto the HMBS Lawrence Major for immediate response in the event any of the islands were severely impacted. Additionally, RBDF deployed advanced teams into Exuma, Mayaguana, Acklands, and Crooked Island prior to the impact. On Saturday, September 17, 2022, at 12 noon, a hurricane alert was issued for Tropical Storm Fiona by the Bahamas Department of Meteorology. At the time, Tropical Storm Fiona was located approximately 635 miles southwest of Coburn Town, 735 miles southwest of Matthew Town in Agua, and 1,070 miles southwest of New Providence. Tropical Storm Fiona was moving toward the west at near eight miles an hour. On Sunday, September 18, 2022, Tropical Storm Fiona transformed into a hurricane with 80, 80 miles per hour winds and gusts and winds extending up to 140 miles from the center. A tropical storm warning took effect and by the evening, the storm turned toward the northwest. The National Emergency Management Agency Operational Center, the NEOC, was partially activated on September 17, 2022, by the director of NEMA, Captain Stephen Russell. The NEOC remained operational throughout the response period. NEMA and the Emergency Support Function, ESF, these facilit facilitated the flow of information provided communication to the public, and identified developed operational plans to meet the needs of the, those affected. In the afternoon of Saturday, September 17, 2022, NEMA provided a briefing of the agency's state of readiness to acting Prime Minister, the Honorable I. Chester Cooper, and a number of other cabinet colleagues. The following departments and agencies provided 
also provided during the briefing. Mr. Arnold King from the Department of Meteorology, Acting Director Neil Campbell from Department of Local Government, Acting Director Kim Sawyer, and Chief Welfare Officer Andrea Newbowl, the Department of Social Services, Commander Sonia Miller, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, and Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernanda of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. Following the briefing for the Acting Prime Minister and Ministers, NEMA hosted a press conference to further alert the public on the position of Tropical Storm Fiona and the general state of readiness of key agencies. Deputy Director of NEMA, Gail Outenmonka, moderated the session. I provided an overview of the general state of readiness of the key agencies to the press. Acting Director of the Department of Meteorology, Mr. Jeffrey Simmons, the Department of Local Government Acting Director, Neil Campbell, and Director of NEMA, Captain Stephen Russells, provided updates for the media. The National Emergency Operations Center continued to track and monitor the approach of Hurricane Fiona. The Family Island Administrators and their respective disaster consultative committees in the southwestern, uh, southeastern islands were contacted for updates in their communities. As Hurricane Fiona slowly approached the Turks and Caicos Islands, at 6 a.m. on Sunday, the 18th September 2022, the Bahamas Department of Meteorology issued alert number 11 on Hurricane Fiona and a tropical storm warning was issued for the southeastern Bahamas. Those islands included Acklands, Crooked Island, Mayaguana, Ragged Island, Inagua, Samana Key, and Long Key, and the Turks and Caicos Islands. A decision was made on Monday, the 19th of September, 2022, due to the projected path of Hurricane Fiona and its close proximity to Mayaguana to evacuate a group of vulnerable residents, inclusive of senior citizens with varying medical conditions from Mayaguana. Working in collaboration with Bahamas Air Managing Director, Mr. Tracy Cooper and his team, NEMA was able to secure an aircraft to carry out the evacuation process. Additionally, NEMA with the Department of Local Government, administrators Christian Palacios and Kefian Ferguson and their teams in Exuma and Mayaguana respectively were able to arrange for the successful evacuation from Mayaguana to Exuma. On the morning of Tuesday, the 20th of September, 2022, arrangements were made to evacuate 21 residents out of Mayaguana. However, only 11 persons decided to evacuate. The evacuees were accommodated at the Exuma Foundation Resource Center in Georgetown. The Department of Meteorology issued alert number 29 at 12 midnight, Wednesday, the 22nd of September, 2022. The hurricane warning for Turks and Caicos was discontinued and tropical storm warnings for the southeastern islands of the Bahamas was also discontinued and the all clear was given by the Department of Meteorology. As a result of the all clear, plans to return evacuees to Mayaguana and deployment of initial damage assessment teams were dispatched. NEMA was able to secure an aircraft from Bahamas Air for an 11 a.m. departure from LPIA to Georgetown, Exuma. The delegation included myself, along with the Minister of Agriculture, Marine Resources and Family Islands Affairs, the Honorable Clay Sweeting, the Minister of State for the Environment, and Member of Parliament for Michael, the Honorable Basil McIntosh, Permanent Secretary Carl Smith, the Director of NEMA, Captain Stephen Russell, Executive Chairman of Disaster Reconstruction Authority, Mr. Alex Storr, Commander Sonia Miller, Acting Director of Local Government, Neil Campbell, NEMA Liaison Officer John Nixon, Mr. Matt Mora and Archie Cambridge, and Anton Thompson of BIS. Also included were the initial damage assessment team 
members, namely Chief Petty Officer Ramiko Burrows, Mr. Thomas Fraser from the Ministry of Works, Mr. Sterling Moss, Bahamas Power and Light, Mr. Stephen Burrows, Project Manager DRA, Chief Welfare Officer Andrea Newbold, Department of Social Services, and a team from the Airport Authority. At approximately 12.50 p.m. on Wednesday, 21st September 2020, the evacuees and the ID team departed Exuma for Mayaguana along with an RBDF escort. Upon, arri upon arrival, NEMA presented Administrator Ferguson with emergency supplies of water, tops, towels, blank and blankets for the residents of Mayaguana. Acting Prime Minister, the Honorable I. Chester Cooper, joined the group in Mayaguana, along with the Minister of Social Services and Urban Development, Mr. Obadiah Wilshkam, and Permanent Secretary, Mr. Joel Lewis. Administrator Ferguson and her team led the delegation on a tour of the islands where assessments were conducted in key areas, including the government freight dock and water and sewage reverse osmosis plant. Initial assessment revealed little to no damage, damage to properties. Before departing Mayaguana, the acting prime minister addressed the delegation, local residents, and the media at the administrative complex in Abrahams Bay. Upon return, return to the NEOC, a briefing was held at 7.33 p.m. The Med Department issued the final report for Hurricane Fiona. The Royal Bahamas Defense Force provided final updates on their mission. The Director of NEMA, Captain Stephen Russell, provided an update of the mission to Exuma and Mayaguana. And at 7.40, Director Russell deactivated the NOC. Mr. Deputy, in terms of disaster preparedness and response, there are two areas that require urgent attention to the island of Meguana. These are the Northwest Point Dock at Betsy Bay, which is in a state of disrepair, making access via boats to deliver relief supplies very problematic. And the two reverse osmosis plants, one at Pirates Wells and the other at Abrahams Bay that produces portable water for for the island each require a standby generator. The relevant agencies with responsibilities for these facilities have been advised and I am confident that the requisite corrective action will, be, will take place. Mr. Deputy, we have much thanks to give, th we have much to give thanks for. Firstly, to Almighty God for sparing the Bahamas from the worst impacts of Hurricane Fiona. I take this opportunity to thank all those persons who collaborated in the, in the execution of a successful response to Hurricane Fiona. And these persons are without liberty too. In Exuma, Administrator Christian Palacios, Chief Consular Kendall McVey, former Chief Consular Social Services, C.G. Major and Anya Davis-Claude, Mr. Jeremy, Jeremy Mutton and staff of Sandals Emerald Bay Resorts who provided meals for the evacuees, Reverend John Roll and the Exuma Christian Council, the Red Cross and Ms. Patrice Roll, the hospital administrator, Ms. Elaine Lightfoot and team, and the airport authority, Kamal Gray. Persons in Meguana, Administrator Kefian Ferguson, Water and Sewerage Corporation, Mr. Kevin Rowell, BPL, Miguel Campbell and Nikita Charlton. And those men, I must uh, uh, send a special kudos to. They got the uh, electrical supplies up in record time. Yes, sir. Police Officer, Assistant Superintendent Mario Murphy, uh, Pastor Melody provided the food, staff in the Administrative Office, Breon Charlton, Jeremy Charlton, Chief Consular Huel Williams, Physician Dr. Crystal Roll, Nurse Bridget Charlton, and local businessman 
<coughs> Debbie Brooks. This, Mr. Deputy, the circumstances of Fiona brought out the best of us as Bahamians. We are our brother's keeper. Exuman, Exumians were able to execute on short notice taking care of the infirmed and the most vulnerable. So did Sandals. We thank God there was no loss of life and minimal damage has been reported. That ends the contribute communication with regard to Hurricane Fiona. Mr. Deputy, I now turn my attention to Hurricane Ian. And this information is coming from the National Emergency Agency. And this is a summary from the Department of Meteorology as at 7 p.m. Alert number one was issued for Hurricane Ian by the Department of Meteorology on September 27, 2022 at 1800 hours, indicating that a tropical storm warning is now in effect for the islands of Grand Bahama and Bimini. At 1,700 hours, the center of Hurricane Ian was located 275 miles west, southwest of Alice Town, Bimini, and 325 miles west of Red Bay's Andrus, 330 miles southwest of Freeport, Grand Bahama, and 375 miles west, southwest of New Providence. Hurricane Ian is moving towards the north at near 10 miles an hour. A turn towards the north, northeast, with a reduction of forward speed is forecasted for tonight and for last night and today. The center of Ian is expected to move over the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, past west of the Florida Keys, later and approach the west coast of Florida today, Wednesday, September 28, 2022. Residents in Grand Bahama and Bimini are asked to prepare for the possibility of sustained tropical storm force winds on Wednesday night and Thursday. Residents in the remaining of, in the remainder of the Northwest Bahamas, including Abaco, Berry Islands, North Andres, New Providence, and Eleuthera, wind gusting to gale force during that period. The National Emergency Management Agency's Operation Center was partially activated on September 27, 2022, at 1800 hours and remained off operational throughout that period. NEMA, the Family Island Administrators, and Emergency Support Function, ESF, leads facilitated, facilitated the flow of information, provided communication to the public, and identified and developed operational plans need to meet the needs of those affected. The NEOC was partially activated by the Director of NEMA, Captain Steven Russell, and the following persons were represented. Deputy Director Gail out in Monka, Deputy Manager Lisa Boleg, Chief Petty Officer Ramiko Burrows, Administrative Cadet Kayla Albury, Administrative Associate Caitlin Taylor. As of 900 hours, September 28th, 2022, representatives from the following ESFs will join the NEMA staff in the NEOC health and medical services, <coughs> urban maritime search and rescue, mass care and shelter services, local government, and the Department of Meteorology. And the timeline of events, the Ministry of Education issued a statement stating that all schools in Grand Bahama and Bimini will be closed until further notice as a result of Hurricane Ian. Contact was established with the following. Administrator Joseph Ferguson, Ms. Tammy Mitchell, Deputy Chairman of the Grand Bahama Disaster Consultative Committee, Administrator Desiree Ferguson, and Mr. Roach, Deputy Chairperson of the Bimini Disaster Consultative Committee, and Administrator Deidre Fox in the Berry Islands. In Grand Bahama, 
as of 16.30 hours on Tuesday, September 27, the West, West Grand Bahama District Disaster Preparedness Team is on standby and ready to activate if the need arise. The residents of West Grand Bahama were advised on the high alert for possible ocean swelling as well as flooding in low-lying areas. The following shelters ready should need the following shelters are ready should a need arise for them to be open. The Church of God of Prophecy in Seagrape, Bethel Delivery Center, Jonestown, Community Wholeness in Martintown, Church of God of Prophecy and Central Baptist Church, Pinedale, and Bethany Baptist Church, Hannah Hill. Residents, residents were advised that in the event that an emergency evacuation should take place, they should find safety in either the above shelters or at a relative or friend's home that is not in the southern coastline areas. Supplies were obtained from Nima Grand Bahama Warehouse and transported to the Eight Mile Rock Emergency Operations Center. The West Grand Bahama District have at their disposable, disposable push to talk phones that are capable of communicating from Sweden Ski to West End. Satellite phones are also available. In Bimini, the Department of Social Services office stationed in Bimini advised that the following shelters will be activated on Wednesday, September 28, 2022. The Gateway Gymnasium and the Lewis McDonald High School. Mr. Deputy, I would also like to inform two members of the Grand Bahama community, in particular, Mr. Jimmy Smith out of West End, and also Mr. Ricky Martin, who has voiced their concern in, in particular with regards to the flooding in Eight Mile Rock and the cleaning of those drains, the clearing of those drains. Those concerns were also uh, uh, mentioned to me by the Honorable Member for Pine Ridge, who has voiced her concern that those areas flood um, particularly fast, and that is a concern, and I want them to know that that position has been made with the Minister of Works, the, the Member of Parliament for, for, for Charlotte. And finally, Mr. Mr. Deputy, I would like to assure my constituents of the great constituency of Pinewood that we have had sustained rains over the past few days. I too am not desensitized to what's going on there. As a matter of fact, the Prime Minister called me for an update on Pinewood this morning. I personally drive through the, the, the main affected areas of, of Sapadilla and Jacaranda, uh, Gasarilla, Rosewood, Cottonwood, Sugar Apple, and to Miss Michelle Wood King, who has sent me uh, messages and pictures. I too have passed on those uh, information, and in particular my girl Hannah from, from Jacaranda. I assure her that those concerns have been relayed, and as soon as the water subsides, we look forward to our continuation of cleaning those drains and providing our final solution, which is to provide our uh, remediation of deeper wells and our drainage system in Pinewood. Mr. Deputy, I thank you for your indulgence. Thank you, Honorable Member. What are the documents we brought up?
order that the documents to lie on the table. Further communications by ministers. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Central and South Eleuthera. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I am always grateful to stand here in this honorable chamber and to represent the great constituents of Central and South Eleuthera. And I am also grateful to the member of parliament for Cat Island, Rumkey, and San Salvador, the prime minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, for the opportunity to serve in his great cabinet as minister with responsibility for agriculture, marine resources, and family island affairs. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I could not have imagined like the Prime Minister said, what a difference a year could make. <laughs> and what a great team can really, really do to truly make a difference in one sector of our country. I am blessed to be surrounded by teams within my family, the constituency, and the ministry that are talented, creative, and intuitive. They are the real heroes of the year. Much has been accomplished within the constituency of Central and South Eleuthera, but today I would focus mainly on my ministry. We have together been able to clear the bushes and debris, and we are in the season of tilling the soil and planting, mm. and in short order, we will begin to reap the harvest and see the real fruits of our labor. In this process, Deputy Speaker, there were many learning curves, unforeseen events, and some deterrence. However, we have been able to rise to the occasion, face the challenges head on, gain an understanding and appreciation for where we were and how we can measure to how far we've come. Last week, I had the immense pleasure of addressing the almost 600 staff members under my ministry and various departments at a staff appreciation event to reconnect with them face to face. To congratulate them for their hard work and dedication and to also thank them for realizing the vision of this government as we move aggressively towards meeting the government's mandate to improve food security throughout the nation. Mr. Deputy Speaker, as I mentioned, this, this effort has not been brought about by one man or through one entity. We have created teams throughout the ministry and various departments that are working separately but simultaneously towards one common goal. I must applaud the public relations team at the ministry, spearheaded by Ms. Candia Smith, who have gone to great lengths to make the ministry relevant, relatable, and indeed attractive. Well, I was waiting for somebody else to say it, so I said attractive first. <laughs> The various shows and podcasts, like the Good to Grow series, promoting the ministry and its departments and the community of farmers, fishermen, and artisans that we serve through social media outlets and other platforms, have increased the visibility of the ministry, thus attracting the interest of many young professionals in the field and re-energized those senior participants in the various disciplines to better engage with the technical teams and gain easier access to goods. The word is getting out, Mr. Deputy Speaker. The government is indeed serious and focused on revitalizing the agricultural and fishery sectors throughout our country. Mr. Deputy Speaker, as I stand here today, the various department heads and technical teams throughout my ministry sits in a room with DTAD to continue our efforts in providing an electronic platform that makes it easier for farmers, as it is for fishermen, to access goods, services, permits, and training opportunities and approvals. We have provided some electronic processes thus far that we have already spoken about in this place. I continue to promote the implementation of these technologies as it provides the much needed access to farmers across the region and country. If COVID-19 pandemic has taught us anything, we have learned that our islands and its inhabitants are only a button click away. Likewise, goods and services offered in the capital should be 
and can easily be extended to every family island through an electronic platform. And I'm pleased that this has come to fruition in just one year, and we seek to improve on the foundation to make these services more accessible. Mr. Deputy Speaker, as I mentioned before in this honorable place, we will restore BAMSI, not just to its original purpose, but we intend to build on the foundation laid and make BAMSI the focus of our national agricultural efforts to provide food security. Okay. Already, BAMSI has engaged professional Bahamians. Professional Bahamians. Professional Bahamians. Yes. To join its team. One such professional is a livestock and poultry consultant to provide expertise and training in these farming initiatives. Mm -hmm. The piggery is currently being constructed to conduct studies on different breeds of pigs to determine the most advantageous to raise in our country and also to breeding methodologies to strengthen the bloodline of the pigs to provide the data and information for farmers to be able to grow the best animal for the market. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I have spoken on the initiatives of this ministry to pick low-hanging fruit. Mm. We, need, we need not diversify our investments so much that we are stretched too thin to see the benefits of our efforts. As such, we are investing heavily in the poultry industry across the organizations. BAMSI will invest in poultry to conduct studies to obtain data to effectively provide training tools and best practice methods for farmers. Also to establish a hatchery to provide farmers throughout the country with a reliable source of chicks on a constant basis to maintain their farms as opposed to importing chicks periodically. Mr. Deputy Speaker, BAMSI has also embarked on a greenhouse project that will engage family island farmers to provide training opportunities in greenhouse technology. We will expand the opportunities to grow specific varieties of crops year-round. The first phase of this project will impact the islands of Abaco, Andrus, Cat Island, Axuma, and of course Eleuthera. And I'm happy to announce that these massive greenhouses is not just an announcement, but they are in country as of this week. Mr. Deputy Speaker, BAMSI has also been approved by NACOP to host several additional short courses to continue to provide education to emerging farmers and fishermen, adults that are seeking to continue their education in agriculture and marine science. We have evolved from the conversation of seeking partnerships with international organizations and universities to actually forging these partnerships. These organizations and universities will provide opportunities for BAMSI students to obtain tertiary and postgraduate degrees, and also to assist ministry staff and technocrats with the same opportunities. We are already making strides in this area as we have begun our partnership with Duke University in research on climate change study to be undertaken right here in the Bahamas. Mr. Deputy Speaker, at BAIC, there continues to be a strong push to assist our partners with their manufacturing, with their labeling, the marketing, and sales of their products. Not only have we assisted in business plan preparation, but in providing the framework to operate and seeking the relevant market partnerships where our partners are able to make direct linkages with buyers. We have hosted the Authentically Bahamian Show in conjunction with the Nassau Cruise Port and of course the acclaimed Taste and Tell event. Both engaging artisans, craftsmen, and producers offering them access to new markets. BAIC recently honored pioneers of the cooperation and has ensured that their contributions to the establishment and growth of the cooperation remains etched in history. Unsung paysetters like the former member of parliament and chairman Mr. Edison Key, Mr. Benjamin Remy, and Mr. Matthew Fox there at BAIC. The streets through the industrial park now bear their name and preserves their legacies. Mr. Deputy Speaker, there has been significant strides made to improve the properties under the cooperation. We continue to access the applications for new land leases, and we have streamlined collections for our partners that find themselves in arrears over the years. 
As a matter of fact, Mr. Deputy Speaker and colleagues, the evidence shows that since Chairman has taken office, Honorable Member for Southern Shores, BAIC has reviewed, approved, and presented more leases to our partners in one year mm. the mm. Entire, than in the entire four and a half years wow. of the prior administration. This speaks to the holistic approach and the level of commitment and the drive that this team, that this team has mm -hmm. to meeting the mandate of this government by tackling food security issues. Yeah. Speaking of land, Mr. Deputy Speaker, this one borders on your constituency. BAIC has been spearheading two major initiatives. One is the ongoing commitment to partner with the Bahamas National Trust to preserve a unique pond, cave systems, and surrounding land called Sweetings Pond. No pun intended, Chairman. <laughs> it is said that mm. Sweetings Pond has the largest population of seahorses worldwide. This will now become the National Seahorse, Seahorse National Park at Sweetings Pond in the great constituency of yes. Centrally yes. South Lutheran. <laughs> I said yeah, <laughs> so, so this will attract not just tourists, but mm -hmm. will be a cultural and heritage awesome. site where Bahamians can provide opportunities for themselves, oh, yeah. an educational and research facility there where uh, we can have students come and do their tours. So this is, is holistic in its approach there at Sweden's Pond in itself. Mm -hmm. BIC has also completed the transfer of the 100 of acres to work with the Ministry of Housing to provide lots and affordable homes in Hatchet Bay. Mm -hmm. The survey is currently being conducted, yes. and it is hoped that by the second quarter of next year, mm -hmm. Minister, oh, yeah. homes will I be in construction on this site. <laughs> Mr. Deputy Speaker, the Department of Marine Resources continues its great work in developing our fishing industry. Uh, just recently, we commissioned patrol vessels in South Andres yes. and in Bimini, you, which will help to prevent overfishing and illegal fishing in our waters. We have implemented laws over the years to protect this industry, and it is high time that we continue to do so by providing the necessary tools that they need. Mm -hmm. At the same time we launched the boat in Bimini, we also reopened the DMR office in Bimini with the addition of two staff there to help police uh, the gateway to the Bahamas, eh? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the Family Islands continue to provide us with the opportunity to see, feel, and taste the wonders of God's mighty hands. He seemed to have hand-painted these jewels to give us the opportunity to rest, relax, and enjoy. We have, over the past few months, brought a much-needed economic injection and new life into the Family Islands through the revitalization of our cultural activities, festivals, and regardas. From the Queen's Jubilee Regatta to Raken's Great Festival to Exuma and Long Island Regattas and Black Point, Eleuthera's Pineapple Festival, and many homecomings and events across the islands. It is a pleasure and privilege to be a part of these events, and I am sure that the vendors and the family islands yes. are very grateful to see these activities resume, and likewise, those who partake from near and far are all more relieved to be finally be free to move about and enjoy our culture throughout our islands. Mm -hmm. The ministry is in the process and planning stages to host the best of the best regatta to resume in December. And we expect that this comeback will be bigger than most of previous years to make up for the lost time. So we encourage our sailors, vendors, and participants to come out and enjoy a grand celebration. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the Department of Local Government continues to grow and rise to the challenges of the developing family islands. Recently, a cohort of 13 new administrative trainees were engaged to meet the high demand within the islands. We continue to work towards the improvement of, of administrative complexes and residences to house our staff. The various offices across the country are being engaged by the public service to assist with the placements of new hires in the public service professional engagement program. 
The department is also completing the consultative process of, for a new amendment to the Local Government Act, which should be completed by the end of this year. Mr. Deputy Speaker, this administration has immersed in an assessment of needs, programs, and projects to aid in successfully fulfilling our mandate. We have put our money where our mouth is, and one small program we are financing agriculture, fishing, and producing dreams. We have partnered with Access Accelerator of the Small Business Development Center to provide a grant funding of over $1 million. We know and understand that the traditional view is that it takes millions of capital investment in a farm for it to reach its full potential. We believe that it takes the right idea coupled with the right technology to create a successful farming venture. We believe that a step, no matter how small in the right direction, is the right step to take. Mm. Mm. Instead of planning and getting nothing accomplished, we can see, touch, and feel our progress. Yep. We certainly understand that 20 plus years of industry cannot be resolved in one year, let alone one term. But we will purposely chip away at those once large blocks until they fall into place. We have secured the approvals to engage in the much needed extension offices whose work will be the cornerstone of successful agricultural advances. We are also purchasing two containerized farms shortly, which will help to encourage and train persons in agricultural technology. Mr. Deputy Speaker, we are aggressively moving forward. And as I indicated earlier, each division of the team is working on a specific set of goals in the short term. These goals, when merged, is expected to result in a significant dent in our food import bill. The ability to feed ourselves through poultry production, egg production, and micro gains, and to provide employment opportunities for Bahamians in our country. As for a matter of fact, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I was elated yesterday to join the Member of Parliament for Southern Shores out in Cowpen Road as we visited B&B &B Farms, yes. where Mr. Burroughs has in, erected a new layer house mm -hmm. with 1,000 chickens. Wow. And what's so exciting about this is that we've been speaking about poultry yes. uh, since we took office. And to see a farmer do something that falls in line with the government and a ministry's yes. policy. It's exciting. Yes. That's right. and, and when we was visiting the farm, not only did it fall in line with my ministry's policy, but also in line with the Prime Minister's climate change and climate smart policy. Because this farm is not just a chicken farm, but it's a solarized chicken farm. So, wow. so it goes to show mm -hmm. that when government's policies are right, yes, correct. you create opportunities for Bahamians, yes. and Bahamians will do it. Bahamians yep. will succeed themselves. Mm -hmm. You just have to create opportunities. So I mean, I was, I was elated. I was so excited when we, we passed out there yesterday. So we hope to see many more of that in, in the Bahamas, in Southern Shores. But we will continue to push for education, improve farming techniques, and we'll work with our traditional farmers to streamline what has grown and increase capacity year-round to supply our major food outlets who are eager to create sustainable partnerships with our food producers. Mr. Deputy Speaker, in one year, our accomplishments are many. And I could be a talk in a long time. But we do have a lot of work to do. We have a long way to go. But I want to thank the Prime Minister for highlighting some of the many accomplishments that my ministry has achieved over the past year. Yes. And we can't wait to see what another year will bring. Yes. Our teams have been working diligently in every sector as we are seeking to create sustainable farming models to make food security more than just a catchphrase. Thank you. Audited it.